Kit Timong Suntuan is my last name, and yeah, I hope it, it wake you up in the morning. <laughs> right. Um, thanks, David, for introduction, and this is great to well to be the first one to to kick it off the the event and really to to start it. So, without further ado, I just want to to go right into into this. So, what I want to talk about today is into the year of 2019, where everything is about building and connecting our space together. So really, the theme is how, how we actually build the connection and the fabric that we can build for our decentralized world or blockchain world. Right. So I would start off with, this is something that is really resonated with me. And then I read this report when I started the company a few years back that you know 10% of global GDP would actually be on the blockchain. And then I read it in 2015, 16, and I was just like, is it true? Is it actually going to happen, but we actually really on the track toward that, right? We kind of double the market every year on average. And then if you, if you project it into the next eight years from now, it's actually we on track to do this. And this is something is really inspiring for me when in 2015, when I read it, it's like, oh, wow, OK, this is, this is the future. And really fast forward to 2019, what it actually happening right now. I think when I, I ask myself what it actually the best thing we can do right now or what it really the industry is really need for, for this to happen is really first we have to, to build things. We have to build the, the real use cases, the real product that it will actually affect to the, the actual people. We have to build the connection from blockchain world into, into the real world. Right? We have to build a connection between blockchain and blockchains. That, that's actually all we need. We need the actual use cases, and we need to connect all the blockchain to make it even bigger network effect. And really start talking about building. The building is, if you look, if you look at this, like a, what I call a protocol layer on the internet, you might be familiar with IP, TCP, IP, SMTP. It's all the protocol level that actually bring you application, right? Um, it bring you website, it bring you email addresses, it bring you, you can send picture, um, photos, all of those. And it's really come down to what I see, really believe is the last missing piece that it leave on the internet, which is the, the protocol that bring you value, that value can actually leave on the internet. And we kind of have that blockchain figured out and then all this application, now you can have something is so native that live on blockchain that has value, that it can represent value. Um, we started with Bitcoin, of course, and then it's a lot of more things happening right now. And really, the key thing here is, I think the blockchain protocol layer that it live on the internet right now, we're building that for the last 10 years from, from Bitcoin, but then the, the next thing that we should do is really bring it from the internet world into the real world. I think the key message is really how can you bring that digital currency, that tokens, that all the thing into the real world use cases. And to me, like what this year what's happening is you can see all the stable coin where you can try to bring you know, fiat currency into, into the blockchain, into the real world. People, um, putting the physical goal and then represent it into the digital form and then try to represent it, right? Um, or even people, a lot of solution where you can have this card that you can actually go into any store and then spend cryptocurrency into it. And, and many, many more people are working on it. That's the key part that really I see it need to be done and then it will help the overall, the space to, to grow tremendously. Also, the second thing is, is user friendly. We still figure it out too. Um, the past few years, we educate a lot of people on, you know, how to actually what is the the, the private key, how to actually store it. Um, we came quite a long way from from this command line that you have to type in into the internet into like a, a ledger style or USB. That is is much much easier. Um, maybe the key is just. To, to remove it all or to do something that people already familiar with, password, uh, those kind of things that you don't even have to 
to know that it's a, a blockchain or, or those kind of things. And this is really the key point that I think for, for the building part, we really need to build it and we really, really need to start sing, sending out the message that all this thing is actually real, right? Tokens, cryptocurrency, digital asset is actually real. It's not um, something that it's on the screen or it's just the numbers. I start with a few years back with trading Bitcoin for many years. And to me, for those, the first two or three years, Bitcoin never really feel real to me because it's just clicking to, to the, the trading things and then the numbers just go up and down, right? And for a while, you just realize that, oh, this is actually really great technology, but how can I actually using it? I cannot even walk into a Starbucks or a coffee store to, to actually use um, the numbers that I, I just gained. So I think really right now, you just have to make it real. Real use cases, the actual people can actually use it. And that would be really the key for the first one. And to the, to the second part is really how can we connect everyone and everything together? Because really, the premise of blockchain is the, open, the openness, the, the open ecosystem, where it's really permissionless, that people can actually come in, building things. And the key of the network effect is the more people into the network, is actually the more valuable it gets, right? And I think this is really the last time I checked, which is a few, few weeks back, we have more than 4,000 tokens, cryptocurrencies on the blockchain, and it's just a proof of, well, when the network is open, anyone can actually jamming in, and then it, this thing is still keep, keep growing. And the really, really interesting one is, the next thing is, we have so many blockchains that that's being built right now. It's from really a, a, a public one that many people know from Bitcoin, Ethereum, and, and so on, into a private one that so many hundreds of companies are, are using it and building it right now. We're going to have so many blockchain in, into the future, right? And you can imagine it if you actually try to connect all the blockchain, because each blockchain are designed really specific for each use cases, smart contract um, to be store value to do a payment or those kind of thing. And in my opinion, that there would not be one blockchain that, that kind of rule them all. It's going to be so many blockchain all over the place. And the key is how can you actually connect this blockchain together in a way that it's so easy, it's, it's pretty much free, like TCP, IP, that it's really, really thin protocol that you can connect all these things, right? And one of the project I think is really interesting is something called Comet that we're working on is how can you actually connect all this blockchain in a way that, first of all, it's not building another blockchain on top of another blockchain, right? But it's, I think the fundamental message is it has to be no blockchain. Each blockchain has their own already native tokens and already native ecosystem. How can you actually connect it in a really, really simple way? And I think that the, the approach is you have to find the way that what is the common building blocks that each blockchain has, and then you can connect through that. And this should be free for anyone to use, and then it should not be any tokens or around that. So one other thing is that we found that all blockchain has, 99 or 90% more than that, is really most of them has multi-sig solution, right? And then another thing is the time lock that, that a lot of blockchain has, or even many blockchain doesn't have, they can upgrade and then have all this. And then also hash lock or something is really like password or, or hashing. If you have these three building elements, you can connect the blockchain where um, you can run smart contract on another blockchain, and then you can have another, let's say, Bitcoin or any things to, to actually execute it in a way that you don't need another blockchain to connect. Or if a bank or someone has their private network, they can run completely, while you can connect to another private network or another public one. It's free, and then it should, it should be the way we should think about how to connect the blockchain together. And it's really come down to why we have it in the first place. I think it's really the same thing with 
the internet, where you open it, where you open for innovation. Anyone can build a website in Japan or in Hong Kong, right? And then another people in South America can actually use it and vice versa. And it's the same thing for, for, for money, for something that has value on the internet, that you can build a lot of application that anyone can use, or you don't need to go to a bank to like, beg for permission to start something that, that has something to do with money and value. So I think that's the key that we need to, to try to push forward as an industry. So at the end of the day, when you make a lot of connections, and then you can imagine it's become like a fabric for the, this world, that the more, the more connection you made is the more valuable of the, of the network. And really, to me, it's really come down to this thing when I start reading the report a few years back that 10% of global GDP will be on blockchain. And I still believe we on the track to get there. Um, it's going to be about $8, 10000000000000 trillion. But a lot of people in this room, a lot of people in this conference actually doing something really great to, to make this happen, to, to bring the overall economy into this world. And that's, that's something that um, is so valuable. And then the more people are doing this, it's just going to get multiplier effect um, on top of this. So really, this year is the 10th anniversary of Bitcoin and probably what we call the first blockchain out there. Um, we really came quite a long way for, for 10 years from 2009 until 2019. But I think this is, to me, it's really a start. It just feel like the internet 10 years old that it's just probably not thing there yet. But a lot of people, if you look around, building a lot of cool project, cool solution that I think in, in a few months it's going to get into fruition. You're going to get into the real world use cases and people are going to actually see it and actually get to use it. And really, the first thing that Bitcoin tried to do is to bring the new concept of money into it. And the new concept of money to me is really where the money is, is not it's on, the, it's on the internet, and it get this open innovation like the internet, where like company like us or many companies can coming in, try to program it, try to make it new, try to build something on top. And that's kind of the concept of, of the new money to me. And what it leads us to is really uh, imagine the world that you can walk into any store, right, and then you can use any currency or asset that, that you like or that you, that you own to pay for it. It doesn't matter in, in Hong Kong. It's it probably not going to have to be Hong Kong dollar. It, it could be anything. And I think once you move things into the digital world, into online, that's much more possibility that, that can happen. And to wrap it up, this is something I imagine if we make it successful, it will happen. You know, a few years back, when you, when you have to send SMS, it's going to cost you a few cents per transaction. Right? And this is what it happened today for, for the financial world. It's still transactional based. You have to send money or you do anything on the transactional. You get to pay money for that. But really, if you, if you move it forward, if you connect things on the digital level, if you make it more liquid, you can imagine something like SMS will move forward into WhatsApp, Facebook, like social network, those kind of things. It's not transactional based anymore. You're probably going to move into um, uh, uh, like a subscription model or maybe even, even more advanced, something that is free to use, but then there's another business level on top of that. But it's really the key thing is to push everything forward into, into the digital world, make it more liquid. And I think a lot of things a lot of innovation would happen in the, in the money world. So the last message is really, right now is the best time to just keep, building, keep building things, keep building um, real world use cases, keep building the thing that really people are going to be using, and really connecting, connecting this blockchain world into the real world, connecting this blockchain to another blockchain, and 
we can make a bigger network effect for, for this world. So really, um, thank you so much for coming in here today and really try to, um, 10x is building the bridge between blockchain and then the real world. And really, a lot of people here is building the same thing. So really, thank you. And well, thank you for joining the revolution. Thank you so much.